Looking for a VPN? Well, private internet access has got you covered. With up to five devices and unlimited data for Mac, Windows, Linux, Google Chrome, and more, you can grab it at the link below. What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video and today we're here with our PC build for this month and as we all know the new Radeon 7 from AMD is just hit so I thought why not throw together a pretty nice build that you could go ahead and check out at the link in the video description and well seeing that we got the Radeon 7 let's build it up and build a pretty sweet all AMD build around it so let's get into that and again as I did mention you can find links to parts and also to the PC part picker all in that description box and do keep in mind that this is a pretty good guide and somewhere to start if you're thinking about building a similar system so do keep that in mind it's not sort of the be all and end all system build you may want to do but definitely is a great place to start and speaking of a great place to start we do have the CPU now in the CPU department just like everyone else I love the AMD 2700X it is powerful it has a lot of cores it is cost effective and well it's just a really all round boss chip Sure, it doesn't have the IPC that is something like this 9700K from the Intel camp, but all in all it is still good and whilst I would have really liked to get better IPC, we did still go with the AMD Ryzen 2700X again, thanks to its better cost and also to a lot of cores without paying a whole lot of money. Again, don't get me wrong, it would have been nice to really get that really high-end IPC, but seeing that this card that we're getting in terms of the video card front is also too pretty good on the content creation side, why not go ahead and get ourselves a little bit better all core performance. So we did again go with the 2700X, thanks to the fact that it is an all round boss chip. Now on top of this, we're definitely going to be overclocking this guy a little bit and for cooling we did grab ourselves the Arctic Freezer 33 Esports Black Edition, which is a really nice looking cooler. It has a very striking all black build with whatever colour fans you do decide to go with, so it fits in really well with a lot of builds out there. And if you don't want to stand out like a sore thumb, it's black so it doesn't really stand out like a big silver heatsink. Now sure an AIO would have been in some cases maybe a little bit better but I do run myself personally a 6950X with no issues at all on this exact cooler with one of the fans not even there so I'm pretty sure we're going to see some pretty decent performance once we have both fans there and we still get into that overclocking world so we did go with that uh, cooler there. Moving on to the RAM front we also too wanted to get a bit better performance so we did go with a dual channel kit because as we do know Ryzen does benefit a lot from dual channel memory so we grabbed ourselves two 8GB modules from Corsair in their Vengeance LPX lineup and again is going to benefit our Ryzen chip right here. 16 gigs of RAM is plenty enough for today's gaming and also to a little bit of light content creation and thanks to the fact that the motherboard we picked up has four memory channels or four memory slots rather, we can go ahead and run more DIMMs in there for more capacity, up to 32 gigabytes of RAM without changing too much. Now, yes, we did get the lower performing 2400 kit, but all in all, the performance is still gonna be perfectly fine for what we're looking at and also too, doesn't cost an arm and a leg as fast RAM still costs a pretty penny here in Australia anyway so we could easily add more RAM down the road or just not spend so much on our current system so that's what we went for the RAM department. Now in terms of that motherboard that we're talking about we kept things simple with the Asus Tough B450 Plus gaming motherboard. Now thanks to the fact that it is a B450 chipset means we can drop our second gen Ryzen chip straight in with no problems and it has really just all the features that we need without a massive price tag attached to it. We can do our overclocking, we can add all the RAM we need and also to all the expansion cards. All in all it is a solid board and I've also too had a pretty decent experience lately with some ASUS biases. So all in all it's definitely going to be a really solid motherboard for this solid build and on top of that the actual aesthetics of this guy being a very dark and black kind of theme is also too definitely on point. So all in all in terms of the motherboard front not too bad there. Now storage wise damn it is exciting in 2019 with 120 gig drives sort of being what we've been focusing on and 240 gig drives which has sort of been the maximum when it comes to SSDs for these builds but no throw that in the trash because we went with a one terabyte SSD 
for just $250. And I have to say, for early 19, again, it's probably the best time to buy storage. At the time of recording this video, we can look back just a few months, even a year ago at this point, and we'd be looking at, you know, 256 to maybe 500 gigabyte drives for around that 250 or lower price point. But today, we have a one terabyte drive for $250. And it is interesting to see one terabyte drive in general, in terms of the SSD world, for under $300. Now, yes, this particular Samsung drive isn't an NVMe drive and isn't the world's fastest drive, but still a SATA based SSD is more than fast enough for most people's day to day usages. And it wasn't that long ago that a one terabyte SSD would cost well over $1,000. And again, sure, NVMe drives are more expensive, but Wow, prices definitely have dropped. Now, sure, we've got one terabyte of storage and it's probably gonna be enough for most people out there, but if you are gonna be doing content creation or really pushing this system, you're probably gonna be uh, loading up some larger files. So we did go ahead and grab ourselves um, a four terabyte WD black drive as well. So we've got technically five terabytes of storage all up, one terabyte worth of SSD, four terabytes of mechanical storage. We're definitely going really well in the storage department here. And it's a very reasonable price tag for what we did pick up here today. Now, GPU wise, as we've been talking about in this video, and as it says in the title below this bit right here, obviously we're going with the Radeon 7. Basically, a pretty boss little card. Sure, it doesn't blow some of the top end offerings from Nvidia away, but man, is it a nice card out of AMD. 16 gigs of HBM is an absolute monstrous number. I don't think many of us are actually gonna be taking advantage of that, but definitely when it comes to the compute space and content creation space, this is definitely going to absolutely fly. Again, probably not many of us are gonna be able to max this card out in terms of really pushing that 16 gigs of HBM to or just HBM memory in general, but all in all is definitely going to be a really decent thing here. The video card itself though crushes benchmarks in terms of the gaming front, crushes uh, compute tasks and all that type of stuff. So all in all, it is not a bad card here and really only beaten out by like the 2080 Ti and the Titan. So it's really not a bad option here. In terms of our case, we'd go with the MSI edition and that price tag is a little bit expensive, but all in all is still not a bad card there. Case wise, we went with the Cooler Master H500, which is definitely not bad. It is the model with the mesh front. Um, personally, I just like a different looking case in all of my different builds. So we went with this particular case here. Plenty of airflow over all the internals with those massive fans up front. And definitely is a bit of a standout case in this day and age where everything's got like glass everywhere and they're all sort of like super form factor and that kind of stuff. This is kind of different. Sure, there's big tempered glass windows, but um, definitely has a bit of that old half feel to it, which was really cool to see. Then finally, we grabbed ourselves a power supply, which was the Corsair RMX 2018 edition, the 750 watt model. It is a gold rated power supply, so it's definitely gonna be fine for this build. And because we spent a little bit more than maybe what we needed, this will be easy to carry over to our next build and heck, even maybe our next build, which would be really, really cool to see. As a lot of PCs these days are going down in power consumption as each model does come out. Sure, I mean, the Radeon card is gonna be a little bit on the power hungry side, but all in all, we will be more than happy to see this power supply last two or even three rebuilds, which will definitely save us some money down the track. It does a good job, and I have to say, it is a solid unit. Then we'll throw in a key from our friends over at CDK Offers, and boom, a full AMD locked and loaded build for 3,000 Australian dollars. Throw in that Windows key again, and those RGB LEDs, and again, that price tag is about 3,000 Australian dollars at the time of recording. However, prices fluctuate and whatnot, so do check that description box. And overall, it's a really nice build. If you're an AMD fan or just like the idea of getting some high performance stuff out of AMD, this is definitely gonna satisfy you as it's, well, some of the top parts that AMD does offer. Again, we did kind of keep it on the mainstream side. We could have gone Threadripper for the build, but then we start to get into the realm of a little bit ridiculous on the price point. This thing is high-end, but it is high-end and attainable, which is something that I do like to see in these types of builds. But as I do mention, I'll leave the parts linked in that description box. And if you wanna go ahead and modify them a little bit, let me know down in that comment sections, what would you change in this particular build? Would you go Threadripper or would you go with something from the Intel side? Let me know down in that comment section. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Wow.